Welcome. This is Melinda Barlow, CZT, Certified Zentangle Teacher, and I said I would um, video things I'm doing. And so I'm just getting ready to um, put a um, a cover on this little book I made. I've made several, and um, I've got one here, this one, like kind of popped open. There it goes. And um, it's just made out of, um, gosh, get me in the morning, I don't know what I'm talking about. It's made out of five tiles. I've just folded five tiles and some of them I have dyed, some of them I've used alcohol dye on them, and so, and I've sewn it together and I will do a little tutorial on how I sew them together. But today, I am just getting ready to cover this book. I just glued the end papers on, so you're going to get it in that halfway stage because that's what I'm doing today. Covering so I've got um, chipboard that I bought. You can you know recycle a lot of things to make this. You don't have to have chipboard. And I am going to uh, make it a just about an eighth of an inch, or I would know. I'm not good at metric, so. You get my cam. My, I'm looking for something on my desk, but I don't see it. So I'm going to get out a pen so I can mark how big. And you can see if you, right here at the end, you can see I'm just a little smidgen wider than the book, and then I'm going to mark the edge of the book right down here and up here. And then I'm going to cut it. I had a, a ruler and my X-Acto knife. There it is. Let's make, and so I'm just going to lay my ruler down here and I am going to use my X-Acto knife and just cut. Take several passes. To cut it but there I have it cut now I'm going to cut another one the exact same size so I'm just going to use the book cover and if I go slow it's going to make a cut and then it will just follow right back in that cut I do have a um, paper cutter that would cut this but I find it just as easy as I'm sitting at my desk where I film to cut it. Now I'm going to need this little piece also. And this was just a scrap. So now I'm going to measure I have the width and it's just a hair bigger than the book. If I put the book spine right on the edge you can see it is and I will measure so you can tell exactly how much bigger it is it is about a half a centimeter millimeter I don't know which one of those <laughs> um, larger and then I'm also going to make it just a little bit larger taller than the book so you can see I've got a little bit of um, hanging out there. I'm going to move this one. And I've got a little bit hanging out, so I'm going to mark it with my pen at both ends. And then I'm going to take my ruler, and again, I'm going to cut it. And there we have it. Now I'm going to make sure that they're both the same size. So I'm going to lay this one right on top and I'm going to cut it. And 
just several cuts down. I used to never use an X-Acto knife, but when I put my cutting mat on my desktop, I, I have found it so much more convenient. I do get glue on here and paint and different things, um, but I still love it. I love the cutting mat on here. So now I'm gonna take this piece that I cut and I'm gonna cut it the same length as these little boards. So I don't need to measure, I'm just gonna use my X-Acto knife and cut it. So now I have covers and a spine, but I think this spine might be a little too big. So I'm gonna take my spine and look, yes, it's far too big. It needs to be about the same size. Well, it needs to be the same size as the width of the uh, spine. So I'm looking here and it looks like it is in inches about, we're gonna call it a half inch. So I need to cut this um, little board a half inch. So I'm just gonna mark it. This ruler is terrible though because it it doesn't go all the way it, to the edge of the ruler. I really need to get me a better ruler. I know I have one, I just can't find it. And now I'm going to cut my spine that half inch doing the same thing just going over it usually it takes about four passes I don't know how many that was but there we have our little spine cut we can measure it to see it's a perfect fit on here so now I am going to lay my spine out, I mean my book covers out, and I'm going to put them so there is about an eighth of an inch, the thickness of the board. So if I would put a piece of um, my board in here and then remove it, that's how much space I want in there. And so I usually just eyeball it, just guess. And then I'm going to secure it with um, some book tape. I should have said, I'm just going to secure it with some tape. So I'm just going to use a piece of uh, strapping tape because I have, I do have some book tape that if I'm doing something that I need to make sure it's really secure, I use it. So now I can see through this, this is much easier, and I can lay that down right on top of that to hold it in the right spot. And um, I could put it on both sides, but it doesn't need it. And there we have our book cover. We can do a little test run here to see how it's going to fit. Looks like it's going to fit pretty good, except that's not the book. This is the one I'm doing. And I, I can't tell you measurements for sure because every book I make is a little different. And so I just uh, measure them according to my, um, the size of my signatures. And if you're not familiar with what a signature is, if you look at the spine of the book, you can see, I've glued this one, but you can see that I have um, several different folds of paper. Each one of my signatures in here has 10 pages in it. And I have one, two, three, four, five signatures in this book. I don't know how many I have in this one. One, two, three, I have five in this one also. And that makes a, and I didn't color these, but that makes a fun, um, a fun little journal that you can put in your pocket. The reason I'm making these is I have um, a lot of teachers in my family, and I 
Um, matter of fact, some are just new at teaching. Um, granddaughter just graduated and she's new. She's been teaching since October 31st. The teacher retired and she took over her fourth grade class, loving it. My daughter is now going back to school to be a teacher. She has her bachelor's degree in uh, health and fitness and she's now doing long-term subbing at a school and loving it. And my son's a teacher and um, I was a librarian and so I have nieces, nephews, everyone's, a, everyone's in that teaching field. My granddaughter said, that's the profession that teaches, takes care of all other professions, teaches all other professions and she's right. But, so now I'm going to cover this little thing with some cloth. Now, I use my own book cloth that I make. So I'm gonna pause it here and get my stuff over here so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, I have gathered all my stuff for doing the cover. I have fabric, just some cotton fabric. I have heat and bond ultra ultra heat and bond and i um i just copied the i cut off the little piece that goes in it but here's my heat and bond and what it is it has a paper back and an adhesive on the uh, other side that irons on if you're not familiar with it and now i'm going to take my fabric and i go thrifting and i buy my fabric at um, thrift stores. This just happens to be um, an old cotton sheet. I don't like micro um, microfiber and that's about what you see nowadays is microfiber and I, I can't stand those. But anyway, I don't know, that was a digress there a little. And um, so now I've got my iron heating up and um, I am going to press my, and I cut my heat and bond smaller than my fabric because I don't want the heat and bond transferring to my beautiful uh, ironing surface. As you can see, I've, I've done a little alcohol dyeing on it lately. So now I'm just going to iron Heat this right down and it doesn't need to be too hot of iron I think mine's set on seven no steam and we just um, iron that I'm gonna set my iron over here and now that has adhered to my fabric and so now I am going to cut the excess fabric away that just assured that I did not get the heat and bond stuck to my ironing surface. Otherwise, it could adhere to my book cover when I go to iron it on. And I used to glue my um, book cloth on with um, PVA glue, but I have since then found it much faster for me to produce these if I just do it with an iron knot adhesive. Matter of fact, they you can make your own book cloth and then iron it on to, um, you take this off and then iron it on to tissue paper and I don't know, I could just glue this on but I thought this is makes much more sense. So now I'm gonna lay my, um, my book cloth, I mean my book cover on the, the wrong side where the paper is. And I'm gonna mark a, the where the corners are on my paper. Because I need, oh, that one didn't mark very well. And now I am going to cut this angle here and I'm just going to cut kind of a rounded corner and go in and then not quite make it to the 
end of the corner, but I don't want that little tiny bit of fabric in that corner because it's going to cause it not to fold onto my book cover. I have a garbage can behind me, so you see me turn around. I try to keep my place neat, but at this point it's not. And I use, I'll, have, I'll show you some of the other books that I've done, so stay tuned to the end, and I'll give you just a quick um, look at some of the other ones I've done. So now I'm tearing off the paper, and you can see that that's really shiny. I save this because I'm going to use it as a pressing cloth. And then I lay my book cover down on, my book paper down on here, and I'm going to turn it over so that the tape is on the back side of, on the, you know, facing the glue. Then I'm just going to fold this back and glue it down. And I just have to touch it with the iron and it will stay down until I can glue it, get it some more. I want to pull that tight and glue this down, pull this, and that makes your corners. I always put a little book corner on my corners so it covers up anything that is uh, not perfect. But the, the corners are pretty darn perfect. Now I take my um, sheet that I had and I press it in case there's anything on my iron, you know. And there sometimes is little dirty things on my iron. Because this is my craft iron, not my iron for. Uh, and there we have our book cover all covered. And now it's time to glue the book in. Now, these are the end papers, but I need one more thing on my spine. I need to reinforce this spine so that it... Um, just has some reinforcement so when it's open I can open I'm going to open it to where one of the signatures is sewn together and you can see kind of through that and so I'm going to put some reinforcement over this to keep it from um, you know getting any getting weak and I thought I had my reinforced tape right here I'm going to pause a minute and look for it. I couldn't remember where I put it. I found it. Whenever I have a scrap, I will put it on a piece of um, the um, heat and bond. So I have a little scrap of the blue, and I'm just going to cut it down so it fits over the spine. You can use book tape, but I'm kind of on the, I like to minimize my costs. So I'm going to iron this right over, oh, I'm not on the camera. Let me get my camera here. I'm going to iron this right over the seam, that binding. So I'm going to tear off the, the heat and bond reveal here and I'm going to lay it right on here while I was looking I set my iron further away and now I'm just going to iron it right on the edge of my book oh you didn't see that I was too out of camera let me get it up here and I'm going to do the other side just pull it tight around my spine and this just reinforces and then I'm going to glue down that on the edge it kind of gets a little um, gluey looking but that reinforces this um, spine so that it stays together now it's ready to glue into my book so my signature page I mean my end pieces this is my end piece. It's just glued in. It's not sewn. So I lay this right 
here so that it's right on the edge of my book cover. Now I'm using Fabric Tech. This is my favorite adhesive. And I'm going to run a bit of Fabric Tech right down here and along the edge. And then I do a little serpentine um, thing of glue right there. And then I'm going to take the cover, no glue on the spine. And then I take the cover and I close it on my book. Now I'm going to keep it smashed closed and I turned it over. Now I'm going to open it up and I'm going to do the same thing to this side. Glue. And then close it. Now, I need to keep this kind of pressed together until the glue dries. So, I use and I am going to clip it together here at this spine. I only could find one big jumbo clip, but I have other little clips that fit. So I'm just going to clip it together. I could put it in a book vise, but my book vise is um, really my broom vise when I make brooms. And so um, there we go. We've got it clipped together because we want it to stay, you know, pressure on that until it glues. Fabric tack dries really quickly. So I will be taking this off in just a minute, but I am going to show you some of the other books that I've done. So I'm gonna bring them down into my camera. Here's one that I did that I just tea dyed and I used um, some old, you know, some doilies and different things in here to make a little journal. This one has a few lined pages, but not many. And you can see I put the book corners on. Here's another one that I did, no book corners on it yet, but it's just uh, alcohol dyed pages from a um, uh, composition notebook that was used part partway used. Here is my stack of journals that I've been making. And um, I'm going to stack these up here so you can see. This one um, is uh, it's a 2013 journal and it's it's got um, um, calendars in here that are that I put my Zentangle on and um, then some other blank pages so that you can write but I made six of these for my I can't say because they may be watching and I've also made so your 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 uh, opportunities are endless here. I I teach a, a primary class, and we're studying the New Testament, and I need to cover this up because it has a child's name on it. But I made a um, a I took one of the the paperback New Testaments, and I covered it in hard paper so that they can uh, have a New Testament as we study the New Testament this year. And um, and I also made a little um, scripture kind of a bookmark, but I make one of those every week and they go in and so this one is John 539. So we'll just find John 5. John 3, 
35 and 39. And I will have the kids mark this scripture and then put this right in here to save. I don't know if I'm going to put that bookmark on them or not. But then these kids are only 10 years old. So I am excited about having something for them to of their own that they can use. But So you can cover old books set that back up there so it's lots of fun now this has dried enough that we can take it apart because it doesn't take long for the um, and there we have our book and it opens and you can see the end I should put an end paper I mean a I don't know what they call there's little end things you can so that you don't see the end of that but it opens so it you know you can see it it opens flat so you can write in it and um, it will fit in your purse or pocket and you've got a little tiny book to write in and um, when you have now the reason I made these for my teachers is because kids say the darndest things don't they and so you can uh, write down the funny things they say and I need to write down funny thing I should have done this all the time I was a librarian but I had just recently I had one of my young um, primary kids say he that he was grateful for Noah that he saved the animals so he could hunt and kill them. <laughs> oh, kids say the funniest things. But anyway, have fun with making your little journals. And I can't wait to do this one because it's just a tiny little thing. And I'm going to put my bijou um, tiles in here that I draw on. And just glue them in a little tiny book <coughs> because I don't know what what to do with them if uh, so I made this little tiny book out of the um, like I said out of the let's see if I can find one the the not the 3z but the five tiles and they're so easy to just take a five tile and they're pretty stiff but you can just fold them in half and you've got a great book well thanks for watching and if you want more videos like these little tutorial videos let me know because I'm more than happy to just film what I do every day have a great day and remember to do something creative every day I tangle every day and I also do something creative every day thanks again for watching and have a great day